you, Bao. One thing I was uh, really hoping to ask you uh, for quite some time, um, being sort of from the startup and tech world and always listening to these Silicon Valley founders uh, talking about uh, how more aut automation um, may actually lead to a new renaissance um, era um, of creativity and um, self-actualization um, for everybody. Do you see historic parallels in the way that this vision um, is being promised and sold to us? Uh, it, it's always the same thing. I mean, whenever somebody comes up with a new idea for a technology, for a social system, whatever, then obviously they are going to present it in the most positive and optimistic way. And uh, yeah, we have to be careful about it because it often backfires. You look at the promises made at the dawn of the internet era in the 1990s, and I'm specifically talking about the social and political consequences, that people said this will bring a new era of democracy and tolerance and cooperation because people will be able to share information and get to know each other. And now it sounds extremely, extremely naive. So, um, you know, that's, that's basically my job as a historian and as a philosopher. Yes, if you, are a, if you have a startup or if you are an entrepreneur or you're developing a new technology, obviously you are going to focus on the most positive scenarios. And there are positive scenarios, it's, it's the truth. And then it becomes the job of people like me to present the other side, that there are also dangers. I don't think there is a single technology in history which has only a positive potential. You know, a knife can be used to cut salad, it can be used to operate as a surgeon on somebody and save their lives, and obviously it can be used to murder people. The knife is, you know, can do with it, it doesn't tell you what to do with it. It's the same with the mass communication technologies we have seen in the 20th century. Something like radio can be used to broadcast a range of different musical tastes and political opinions and so forth. And it can also be monopolized by a government to brainwash a population um, and create a totalitarian regime. The radio doesn't care what, what you do with it. It doesn't tell you what, what to do with it. So this is something that we constantly need to remind the innovators and the people who are at the forefront of these developments I think, for example, that it's almost outrageous that today, in order to be a doctor, you need, in most universities, in most countries, you need to take a course or several courses in medical ethics. You won't be able to get your certificate as a physician unless you have some knowledge, some background in medical ethics. But to be a coder, you don't need any ethics even though the coders are now the ones who are shaping the entire society. The algorithms that they are, they are not just coding algorithms, they are coding entire societies, entire economies. And I think that, you know, every day that passes, that we don't make it a, an obligatory requ requirement. You want to work in Silicon Valley as a coder, wonderful, but as part of, of your course of studies, you must take ethics for coders.